for this video, I'm going to go through the process I like to use for getting simple polygonal objects that I need to unwrap real quick, real quick out of Maya and into the Roadkill UV unwrapper. Uh, let me move this platform down a little bit so they're right below their feet. Now, what I found with the unwrap, with the Roadkill unwrap, is it's great for simple objects. So I'm not going to waste too much time explaining like the ins and outs of it. I'm just going to give a real quick rundown of some of the UI, some of the stuff that I use to just get these objects out the door so I'm not fiddling it with fiddling around with it within the UV texture editor within Maya. Now UV texture has definitely come away since uh, the, the last couple of releases of Maya. Uh, this is a simple poly cylindrical polygonal object when I first modeled it out so it gave me a good starter part point for unwrapping it but I want to be able to customly go through and unwrap it so I have more UV, U, more texture UV space for these green parts of this object that have a surface shader material applied to them because these are going to be logos on here and in the middle in the middle portion and the bottom are not going to have as much uv space they'll just share the same uv space and especially this side piece can definitely save a lot more on just not using that much space whatsoever it can be like a solid material over that first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to grab this object and i'm just going to export it out as a obj so just go export selection, come down to, I'm going to go to my desktop and save it out there. And I already did this earlier, so there's my platform OBJ. I will, I'm just going to save over that. Now for saving out an OBJ, you can have these on or off. It really doesn't matter when it comes to moving your object into roadkill. So I will just up export that out. And I'm going to go ahead and open up roadkill off the desktop. Yeah, it's a very small program. It opens up pretty quickly as well. Um, also, I was going to run through real fast and show you guys where you can find the Roadkill downloader. With a simple Google search, you can just type in UV Unwrap Roadkill and it'll give you the Pollen Shapes Roadkill UV tool. On this guy's page, you can just come down to where it says Download for Windows and Maya. It's between one of these two, but the first one, the second one is the source code. You're going to want is this one. It should be the download link so you can run through the installation for getting a setup in Maya. It has it for 3DX Max and, and a couple other programs as well, but primarily I use Maya, so that's the one I was pointing out. Uh, so I'm going to come back to Roadkill and let's go ahead and load in our object. So file, load. I'm going to come down to my desktop and we'll load up that platform. So from here, uh, again, we have our simple layout that Maya gave us for our cylindrical piece. Uh, this object is facing upwards, even though you saw it facing downward. A reason for that being is Roadkill works in Y up. You can see down here in the bottom left. When I exported this out of my scene, my scene was in the Z up. The reason for that being is because I work between Maya and Unreal almost every day, so I have everything within Z up. So working in a your kill, you're going to have things in Y up, so it'll face the right way. And also translating the viewport just that way as well. Translating the viewport is the same way as working in Maya. You just hold down Alt, clicking and dragging, and then I'll rotate. Uh, Alt, clicking the middle mouse button will pan, and Alt and clicking the right, bound, right button will zoom in and out. So first thing I'm going to do is because all this stuff here is telling me that right now it's it's cut unwrapped and it's a little too distracting seeing all these red lines so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come up to this button here it says edge select and basically it does exactly what it, what it says it, it selects the edges of your object I'm going to marquee drag a selection around this and I'm just going to hit W on my keyboard to weld everything together so now those red lines are gone at this point uh, you can already see that the UVs are not spaced very evenly on this object whatsoever. I just really just need to get this object out the door back into Maya so I can go back in Maya and I want to place this object according to where I need it to be in the UV space because these logo areas are going to need the most UV space like I had said before. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come to the edge of the, the center platform and I'm just going to double click to select that entire ring around that platform. I'm also going to do the same with the rear. So I'm going to hold down shift and I'm going to double click that. 
and it won't give me that selection right now. So I'm gonna come back to that and just control Z to undo that. I'm just gonna hit W or C on my keyboard as in cat or Charlie to unwrap, to cut this object off of everything else and unwrap it. Immediately you saw that the top piece is separated from everything else, but everything else is connected to each other like a star shape here. And that's not very good for these sides. You can, you can also, tell what's being stretched by coming up to textures and they give you a couple different viewing options. You have checker which we're on. You have colors and numbers that show you how bad everything is distorted. You can definitely see that in the back and you can also go to show stretch which uh, green would be optimal. Blue means that it's being pulled quite a little bit too much and then red means it's just being condensed. So green is optimal so try to aim for that. So the next thing we're going to do is I want to edge select the other piece of this just like I did with this one. But I'm going to change this out to checker. It's a little bit easier to see. And I double clicked but I can't select the ring. But I can tell in my 2D viewport on the right here that I know where my edges are. So I can go through, select every single one of these edges. quickly almost there about halfway done and again I'm just holding shift I'm just clicking and dragging to marquee select these out these edges now that our edges are selected to separate this the circular part of this object I can just hit C on the keyboard and I can cut that out and it'll place it right up here so these two objects we can stack on top of each other when we go back into Maya now I need to get my logo hangoffs to be separated from this from the actual edges. So I'll come in and I'm just going to double click on this and that should select the border edge of that logo hang off. Again I'm just going to hit C on my keyboard to cut that out. Now one thing I'm going to turn on right now so I don't accidentally select the back side of these is I need to turn on my come down to switches and go to don't select back faces. What this will do is prevent you, you can only select that side, but you can see this is clearly on the other side of it, but it will not select it. Now if I had that off, it will be selecting both sides. It's not too efficient when you're working with like say a head or an organic shape or tubular shapes or tubular or cylindrical shapes in that matter. Because then you'll be selecting the other side quite often and you'll be cutting things by accident and you'll just have to weld them together and it can become kind of a mess. Uh, welding these things is really easy too. Just hitting W, you can like select this whole edge again. And if I hit W, it goes right back to how it was before. And what's nice is uh, Roadkill does a pretty good job of being able to recognize the actual space of the object and actually just laying out the object in general. I mean, it does a lot of the workload for you pretty quick that you'd have to manually do within Maya. So now I have those edges selected, I'm going to hit C on my keyboard and cut those out. And I know I need to, these aren't supposed to look oval in shape, it's supposed to be more uh, square. So I know these are the edges I need. So if I double select, double click these three, I want to find where those edges are. Hmm, not showing up. Oh, huh, there it is, right up in the corner. So I know those are my edges right there. Just like on the other side, I'm gonna cut those. And then that way, the center point is gonna be a little bit more, it's gonna be able to get more space. Now, now I know where the center point of this is. Selecting those two, I can tell. I want those completely separated because they're gonna be two different logos that need as much space as possible. So I can double click on the perimeter of this. Actually, I actually had to triple click there. Because double clicking sometimes will, sometimes will work, sometimes it won't. So triple click that and I want to separate that completely out from that object. And you can see it already gave me my space that I needed. It's, it's evenly laid out just the way I need it to be. And there's the other parts of that logo hang off up here. So I can do whatever I need to do with those later back in Maya and texture those how I need. So again with these objects. I'm gonna make I'm gonna select the innermost innermost squares. I know it seems very simple to say that, but that's technically 
how it is. Okay. So I'm having a hard time with this perimeter select, so I'm going to manually go through and select these. I only got four of them, so it's not too bad. If you're dealing with the objects that are much more complicated in uh, shapes and geometry, say, I'm going to pull up my Maya scene again. Let's say I have a weapon or so, like this gun here. Or even a better example, I have another scene I've worked on as well, was I had this chain cannon. All these different pieces, it'd be very hard in, in uh, the roadkill to be able to see all these objects because you can't really separate the object into different shell parts. So if you wanted to unwrap something like this in roadkill, the best way I could suggest to do it would be to take it apart kind of like this um, and just export each uh, each one of these pieces one by one. Uh, you can separate like this, but if for practical examples, if I were to do this object in roadkill, I honestly would just duplicate it by holding on control D. And then for each part, I need it separated. So within the polygonal, within the polygons tab, I can go ahead and separate that. And I would just take each one of these pieces and export it out as a separate OBJ. And as I, and as I exported them out, I would delete them. And then when I brought them back, it would just populate this spot again in the world space. It's best too when you export things out of uh, Maya that if the center point or the pivot point of, the, of your objects when you export them out of Maya or is back like way over here and your object way over here, then your navigation in Roadkill is going to be a little off. So it's best to be in Maya and just go ahead and center the pivots. Usually that can be found within Modify Center Pivot. So back in Roadkill, I'm going to go ahead and chop these guys out. And made an oval shape for those. So I can keep those together, but I really don't want to stretch these out. Again, I can tell by stretching. And you can see that I've got a little bit of blue. I mean, it's not bad, but it'll show up if I'm actually trying to put, like, I don't know, like a pattern over it. You'll see, like, the stretching happening. <coughs> So I'm going to go ahead and chop that out. You know, I pulled that because I had a feeling that I uh, selected some extra pieces here. So I'm going to hit Control Z to undo that. I'm going to hold down Control and I'm just going to marquee select over all that area within this cylindrical spot. Circular area and I'm just going to hit Control. I'm just going to hit C again on my keyboard to cut that up. It actually give us a really nice chop. That's pretty good. Hmm. Feel something's weird about these. Why is that? So come down to textures checkers. See what's going on. If my labels kept together, that's what matters. But I'm gonna undo that because I'm really unsure of what just happened. It looks like it selected all of our edges, but I can see that those ones didn't get selected. Again, I'm gonna marquee drag over that because I can see that those orange. Those are orange in here. It means they want they're ready to be cut. So I can see that the long pieces were those that the ones that didn't have the selection on them. So I select those up really quickly. If I accidentally select parts I don't want, I just hit down, I hold Control and just sh shift and drag to unselect that. Again, like there, shift drag to unselect it. I just hit C. And I believe these are our four labels. And it looks like those are it. So I can take this back into Maya and then I can do everything I need to. If it, And let's go ahead and do that real quick. So I can go ahead and save this out. It's going to save as, save over that platform. I come back into our scene. And I'm going to drag this off to the side so I have it just in case, the original. I'm just going to go File, Import, and because we exported it out in that world space in our scene, it's going to import directly back into there. Because I know these are labels, I need to make sure that that's smooth, so with Edge Select, I'm just going to go ahead and select those edges. Oops, come on now, there we go. And I'm just going to go ahead and smooth those out with Soft Harden Edges, Soften Edge. So 
that way they render out smooth sided. I missed one right there. Hit G since that was a previous command that I had done. All right, looking good. So now we can go ahead and take this object and we can open up our texture editor. And from here we can actually lay out via the shell movement. This is available in 2015, however we need. So I know like the bottom and top can share the same spaces. These all can share the same spaces as well. So I'm gonna keep those in together in a general UV sharing space so I can stack them. Same with these. And these are our four labels. I know I want my two labels adjacent to each other from this side and this side to be the same. So I know, okay, so there's this one and there's this one. There's those two and we have three, that's strange. So I have that one and this one. So where is our mystery guess coming from? Oh, got five. Well, I guess that'll be an extra label I'll have to think of something cool for. So overall, that's just a quick rundown of how I'll go through getting simple objects out the door for um, pieces like this that I just want to get unwrapped really quick. Uh, so if you guys want any other videos or need any other help with anything, uh, just let me know and I will be sure to try to put a video together if I get the chance. So until next time, thanks.